Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Nadia and this is the place where we get real. And today I wanna get real about painful sex. I wanna talk about the reasons why sex can hurt and also why this is so much more common than you might think. And most importantly, what you can do about it. So if you have ever experienced uncomfortable or painful sex, then make sure you keep on watching. Welcome back to my channel. Are you serious with me? Oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> I don't understand how these things always happen to me. So researchers have looked into the phenomenon of painful sex in women. And that's because painful sex is something that vastly impacts women much more than it does men. Now there are all sorts of different estimates around how many women experience painful sex. One such estimate is that one in three women will experience it at some stage in their life. And I think that's pretty accurate because I really don't know a woman, and I've spoken to a lot of women about their sex lives, who hasn't experienced painful or physically uncomfortable sex. And I definitely count myself among those women. I have had sex that has physically hurt. And I've also had sex that while it didn't hurt, it certainly wasn't comfortable either. And it's something that at the time I found very confusing because as you guys know, if you watch this channel regularly, I'm a big believer that sex education really sucks. It totally lets us down. And one of the ways it lets us down, specifically as women, is it really fails to teach us what good sex should actually feel like. And so for me as a young woman, when I started having sex that felt pretty bad, I didn't question it because I just assumed, well, I guess that's what sex is supposed to feel like. Now that I'm older and I've learned so much more about sex through this job and I've just had more experiences and I understand my body better, I know now that that was not what sex should feel like and I know that I should have spoken up about it. And so I'm hoping that the information I give you in this video can save you from just gritting your teeth through painful sex and give you the confidence to speak up about it and to do something about it so that you do not have to continue having sex that feels bad. Let me tell you this ladies and let me make it as clear as I possibly can because if you don't take anything else away from this video, I want you to take this with you. And that is that sex should feel amazing. And if sex doesn't feel really amazing, then you have an absolute right to speak up and let your partner know and either stop having sex altogether or try something different. Now, with that said, I wanna go into some of the most common reasons why sex can hurt and what you can actually do to tackle them. So let's get straight into number one. One of the most common reasons that women experience uncomfortable or painful sex is lack of lubrication. And this really comes from a huge lack of education around how sex is supposed to work and what it's supposed to feel like. Men have largely been taught, and women as well, that sex is pretty much about putting a penis into a vagina. And so a lot of men will skip essentially straight from taking the clothes off to putting their penis in your vagina. That is certainly the kind of sex that I was having when I was younger. Well, guess what ladies? Your body cannot get lubricated that quickly. It takes time for a woman's vagina to actually lubricate itself. And that lubrication, which occurs naturally when we are aroused and also when we feel relaxed, that lubrication is what helps sex to feel really good. Sex includes a lot of friction. You've got something moving in and out of you, potentially at a quite a rapid rate, depending on what kind of sex you're into. And so you can imagine if there's no lubrication when you're having that friction, that's gonna hurt. In fact, it's gonna start to burn because you've got something dry 
rubbing against something dry. And what can result from sex where there's no lubrication is something called micro tears. And these are microscopic tears, meaning tears that you can't necessarily see with the naked eye, but that are occurring inside your vagina because the tissue inside your vagina, it's very fragile. It's very easily damaged. And so when there's no lubrication around it, it's not protected. And so you can end up with thousands of tiny little tears that are going to cause a really intense burning or stinging sensation. So if you've ever experienced that feeling of stinging or burning, it could definitely be a lubrication issue. For most women, lubrication happens naturally when we are turned on and something that we miss in the process of getting turned on is relaxation because it's absolutely impossible for a woman like physically not possible science says it can't be done to get turned on and lubricated when she isn't relaxed. And a lot of women aren't particularly relaxed when they go into sex. We're worrying about things like how our body looks, am I going to perform, you know, how my partner wants me to, is my partner enjoying this? We might be worrying about other things going on in our lives, like if we've got children, we're worrying about that, we're worrying about other stresses in our lives, and all these things mean that it's not possible for us to get relaxed. The best way for a woman to get relaxed during sex is to have lots and lots of foreplay. That means lots of slow, passionate kissing, leaving the clothes on and not getting naked straight away so you've got time to relax, taking more time to actually get undressed, taking more time to do things like oral sex and just touching and fondling one another's bodies, talking dirty, all of those things give a woman time to one, get adequately lubricated, but most importantly, to relax enough so that by the time penetration occurs, she is lubricated. Now, all of that said, you can do all of that and you can get really turned on. And you might still find as a woman that there's no lubrication going on, that you're still dry. And that can be very confusing. But I want you to know that vaginal dryness is something that affects most women at some stage in their lives. Your lubrication can be affected by so many things. Stress is a big one, but also some medications, medications like antidepressants and even the birth control pill can affect your ability to get adequately lubricated even if you are super horny. Things like the aging process and menopause. There are so many factors that can make it really difficult for a woman to get naturally lubricated even if she's done all the foreplay and she's feeling super turned on and so in that case I recommend a very simple fix and that is go out and buy yourself a tube of lube it's really simple really inexpensive you can get a tube of KY jelly from pretty much most grocery stores and drug stores for just a few dollars. Use as much of it as you need to. Something like KY Jelly is really safe on pretty much most skin types. And I want you to know there's no shame in needing to use lubricant because women aren't human waterfalls. Sometimes we're turned on and the lubrication just doesn't flow. And getting that lubrication is gonna mean that sex is going to be comfortable. And when it's comfortable, you're gonna be free from pain and you're gonna have a real shot at actually having some real pleasure. Now, if you are experiencing stinging or burning during sex and you definitely don't fit into the first one, so lubrication's not an issue, you're either getting naturally lubricated or you're using plenty of lubricant, something like KY Jelly, and you're still experiencing that stinging or burning, you might want to consider a vaginal infection. You might notice a change in your vaginal discharge. So I made a whole video about discharge, which I really recommend you guys go and check out. I will link it up here. And that video is going to let you know what to look for in terms of what healthy discharge looks like and what unhealthy discharge looks like. And so if you recognize that your healthy discharge has suddenly become unhealthy, which usually means there will be a change in the color or the smell. There can often be quite a foul odor coming from your discharge. That could be an indication that you have an infection going on. Now, the good news is vaginal infections are often very easy to treat. They can often be treated just with a course of antibiotics 
or a cream. So please don't have any shame around it. Doctors see women every single day with vaginal infections. There is nothing they haven't seen before. Your case is not gonna be rare or unique or gross to them. It's gonna be super duper common for them. And they're going to give you that relief by giving you an actual treatment plan. Vaginismus is a condition which is thought to affect somewhere between 5 to 17% of women. And one of the main symptoms of it is pain during sex. And basically, vaginismus in a nutshell is a condition that causes your vaginal muscles to involuntarily contract so that when you are trying to penetrate your vagina, whether it is with a penis during sex, or even if it's just with a tampon or your finger, you're going to find that it's incredibly tight and it's very difficult to get something in there. And that intense tightness and contracting kind of feeling is going to cause pain. The pain is usually more of a sharp kind of stabbing sensation is how most women describe it rather than a burning sensation. But some women with vaginismus can also experience that burning sensation. If you have vaginismus, you might also experience a feeling of your vaginal muscles spasming or tensing. Now, the only way to know if you have vaginismus is to go and see your doctor and get checked out. A lot of times your doctor will refer you to a specialist, someone like a gynecologist or an OBGYN to actually do some tests and see if that is what is causing your pain. Some of the treatments that have been found to have success for vaginismus include antidepressant medication because we know that there is a link between the brain and the vagina and so sometimes anxiety can actually be causing the spasms. And another form of treatment which can really help is getting more relaxation and less stress in your life. So doing things like yoga, meditation, mindfulness, actually going to therapy. Vulvodynia is another chronic condition that can cause pain during sex. And it's usually described by women who suffer from it as a feeling of rawness or burning inside the vagina. Some women can also experience a stinging sensation. And it is also triggered not just by sexual intercourse, but for a lot of women who have it, it can be triggered by things just like sitting for long periods of time or riding a bike or really any activity where their pubic region is having pressure against it for a long period of time. Now, while there is no known cure, there are treatment options and things that you can do to make sex and just everyday activities more comfortable. Biofeedback therapy has been found to have some efficacy in terms of helping women get back that quality of life and sex life, as have some topical treatments that can be used around and inside the vagina. So if you are experiencing a feeling of rawness, stinging or burning, and if you're noticing that that feeling is exacerbated, not just by intercourse, but by things like bike riding and sitting, then it's definitely worth going and speaking to your doctor about it. Ideally asking for a referral to a specialist someone like a gynecologist who's gonna be really well versed in it and getting yourself checked out. Endometriosis is a chronic condition and it's something that I personally suffer from. I actually made a whole video about my journey with endometriosis and finally getting a diagnosis and getting surgery, which has helped me more than I can put into words. So I will link that video up here if you guys wanna go and check that out and that's gonna give you more of an insight into endometriosis. But basically it's a condition that can cause intense pain, particularly around the time of a woman's period. And you can also experience pain during sexual intercourse. And that pain is caused by the fact that endometrial tissue starts to grow outside the womb in areas where it should not be. So it can attach itself to the ovaries, the bowel, it can be floating around all inside you. And it causes just the most extreme pain. As someone who is a sufferer of endometriosis, the best way I can describe it is honestly, like someone is stabbing me in the stomach a million times. Like I can't move when I have that kind of pain. I can barely breathe. Pretty much the only thing that was ever able to relieve that pain when I had it was going to the emergency room and being injected with morphine, which is obviously 
not a practical long-term cure. So the real kind of cure for endometriosis, because there is no real cure, unfortunately, for it, is to get surgery. And that's what I did. I had all of my endometriosis removed, and it means that I am now, at least at the moment, pain-free, and I can have pain-free sex and pain-free periods and just live a pain-free life. So if you have particularly painful periods, and I don't just mean regular period cramps, I mean the kind of pain that fully immobilizes you so that you have to miss days of school or work, pain that makes it hard to just move around, eat, breathe, just do any of your normal daily activities, then it's worth going and getting checked out for endometriosis. Please do not accept that kind of pain as just a part of having a period. Periods can be painful and they can be annoying, but speaking as someone who has had endometriosis surgery and is now experiencing healthy, regular periods, I can tell you that regular period pain is not pain that is going to stop you from being able to live your life. So if your periods are doing that, please go and get checked out for endometriosis. In my time having endometriosis, I saw dozens of doctors who honestly convinced me that the pain was all in my head and that I was just very sensitive. And I'm so glad that I trusted my body. I knew there was something wrong. I knew it wasn't normal to be in that amount of pain during my period and while I was having sex. And so I kept going and seeing new doctors until I found a doctor who would actually take me seriously. Unfortunately, the medical system has been known historically to invalidate women's pain, to treat women's pain like it just doesn't really matter or like, because we're women, we're just being dramatic and we're sensitive. And I know so many women who have been basically just pushed out of emergency rooms and made to believe that they were just making up their pain in their head. So please trust your body. Your body will never ever steer you wrong. Find a medical professional who you feel comfortable with and who is going to take your pain seriously. If sex ever hurts or even feels uncomfortable, you have a right to speak up. You have a right to stop the sex and to only have the kind of sex that makes you feel really, really good. All right, guys, if you enjoyed that video, I'd love you to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell so you don't miss my next video when it's out, and I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.